normally, I wouldn't do this kind of review. I don't know really why. Um, knife reviews aren't really my shtick. Um, I think I did like a, a weird random review of some Kershaw knives that came from the email that were absolute crap, but... Um, the knife community is pretty tacked down. Um, everyone knows, and anyone who knows me, knows that I've carried a large variety of knives that come out in a whole bunch of different ways with a bunch of different blade styles, uh, everything up to and including swords. Um, I actually kind of think it's funny that this afternoon I was in that Medieval Times thing, like in the mall. Um, it's this, if you don't know what it is, maybe you don't live around here, they don't have like a chain of them. Medieval Times is like a place where uh, they reenact like jousts and you get to like sit in like the stadium and eat like mead and you know, lamb or something. And they, they put on like a little show. It's like professional wrestling sort of except for with knights. Well in the lobby of that they got like a bunch of people dressed up as like bar maidens and you know, knaves and such and the like. They have like a whole bunch of, just a wall of shitty stainless steel cheap sword wall hangers. And me and my brother walked in and I took a picture real quick with my cell phone with the swords behind me and then one of the guys got in trouble with his boss or whatever because he said I can let you take a picture holding one and I was all like, alright. And so I remember they got a quick picture and I started going, what's the mark on this? And as I'm turning it over to like see if it says like 60, you know, or um, stainless Chinese 440, he goes, I bet it, I bet it, and he like grabs it back real quick and then his manager gets all angry and shit like that. And um, I think it's funny that like, the guy's like, oh, I don't know, wouldn't want to, you know, I guess they're afraid of hurting themselves, but anyway, I mean, as you can tell, blades are like one of my things. So it's kind of funny that I really wouldn't do knife reviews, depending on, I mean, I have so many of them, but it's like, all the other, all the knives that I've gotten, I've watched all the reviews on the internet anyway, and so it's already been kind of tacked down by me, you know, by everybody else. Swords are a little different because it's a little less tacked down by the whole community and, um, on YouTube, and uh, they cost me a fuck ton. So, anyway, um, I decided to buy a knife that was really expensive. It's a cold steel knife, and I wanted to do a, a review to explain kind of to counterbalance all the other reviews that are hanging around out there. So without, I mean, don't get upset when I don't know the exact quotes and statistics and all that shit or if I make a mistake. Without further ado, I grant you, I give to you, grant you, I give to you, I present to you the Cold Steel Espada, the large. I, Cold Steel sent me a magazine in the mail um, talking about this shit, and I was just going through it while I'm on the can. I mean, I don't read while I'm taking a shit. Um, anyway, so I started reading about these Espadas here, and more and more the blade shape sort of intrigued me, and then I started looking up that knife porn that they do on the internet where they're all like, if you need your knife to go through, like, you know, uh, 18 layers of a bra, does it? Uh, we are cold steel, can burn the bra over 30 hours of... And that shit just gets me, like, excited. I mean, like, you know, I think there was a video that Zach posted of me on the internet that says Tolstoy watches knife porn, and it's... It's just hysterical, Jimmy. Go ahead and see it. Come on, pause the video. Go take a look. That's right. You enjoyed that. Anyway, so um, I went ahead and I, I started looking at the prices here. And I started looking at all the different views of it. Um, they are they come in three different models, small, medium, and large, except for just like fast food chains. They say there is no small. There's a medium large and an extra buttfuck large. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So after a little bit of deciding, I went with the... Why does that... I put oil on you yesterday. Or the day before that, possibly. Yeah. Anyway, um, they had three different models. They had the um, they had the small one, the medium one, large one. I went with the large one. The large or medium um, is a five and a half inch blade. I mean, I guess that's the first thing you're gonna notice when I take it out is that it is quite large. I'm just comparing this like to my skull and everything to my hand. It's difficult until you finally get in your hands to figure out how big it is. People have done. You can have it measured and heard it said out loud. Like, whenever someone says the length of a knife or really anything, if they say five and a half inches, immediately I look at the span of my knuckles, because I'm like, two, one, two, two and a half, three, four, five. So a little bit more than the span of my knuckles. But then again, I later on found out that that weird trick of that's an inch only worked when I was like in eighth grade. Now my hands are a little bigger and it doesn't, so... Some people, some giant hands may not find this difficult to, to hold, some may do. That's why they made three different uh, versions of it. I can only review for you the middle of the ground one, the middle one. But most people agree that the middle one is ideal for them. However, not many reviews exist of the small one. And I've seen the small one, and I'll tell you what I think about that near the end. Let's continue on with what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about. 
which is, um, yeah, the blade is quite large. I mean, I can just show you. I could have done this professionally and, like, laid down a table and, like, a mat and, you know, but, 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 but I'll just go over real quick. The only reason that I'm really reviewing this, one of the only reasons I'm really reviewing this actually was the price. So I was looking at the prices. I don't know what the medium and the large is, but they're all kind of around the same area, give or take 20 or 40 bucks. This one was 180 and that was a deal off of Amazon. Don't judge me. You spend your money on weird shit, too. So, um, yeah. Get a good look there. This is um, polished G10. Some people might complain that it's not very grippy. Maybe you won't be able to see this in the light, but it has... It looks like it's supposed to be like the mahogany of a... Uh, or the hickory of a um, gun, gun stock. It, it has a wood grain kind of etched in there, and it looks super sweet. Um, I believe this is like hardened, heat-treated aluminum on the handles right there. Um, and it is very pretty. One of the downsides, and you might not be able to see that. I mean, if I... Here, yeah, I'll put you You can more. really see that, but it starts to get scuffed. I dumped this, I uh, put this in my pocket, and then dumped some pocket change and my car keys in there. And um, that caused some scratches, a very lovely little snick here. Uh, the more you use this, the more it is going to get nicked. The blade will even become nicked because it has such a polish. Now, just for comparison, I guess, if any one of you out there, that's, I think this is the Gen 2 Voyager, I used to think that this was a big one. Um, and in a way, I still do, and it's a very ideal knife. Honestly, um, very lightweight, you know, the Zytel handles and everything. This is a good little workhorse knife, and I used to think this, this is big, and I've actually... Well, I wouldn't say... I don't really want to mention how I've used this, actually. Anyway, uh, cutting rope. Yeah. So, um, comparison there. Yeah. And I used to think this was big. I believe this... I used to, This is about a four-inch blade, so about an inch and a half shorter than the uh, cold steel spot. And obviously nowhere near as thick. So, there's that. Right, so that was a bit of comparison for you. Um, there's some scuffing that can happen on those aluminum plates. Very large knife, ba ba ba. The blade, uh, what I've come to find is a hollow ground. Um, there's a kind of different, a few different ways that you can sharpen a knife when making it factory um, or making a knife at all. And I looked them up all up on the internet. Um, Basically, hollow grind is like what you would find on a razor. It kind of tapers in. It's hard to do it with my hands. I wish I could draw it for you, but like really comes in almost like if someone took a perfect flat grind, which would look like that, and then bent it in, like the arches on a Chinese, you know, Buddhist monastery or something like that. Um, and that that makes it relatively, you know, very very sharp. However, the edge will eventually become too dull to even resharpen because of that. So it's, technically, some people are complaining saying it's not a workhorse knife. But I guess the question is, what kind of work are you going to be doing with it um, that would cause it to, you know, is this really going to be something you carry into the woods? I mean, and that brings it down to, as, you know, nothing fancy would put it, philosophy of use. And here's where I want to stab each and every one of you who have done this review, the review of this knife. Jesus Christ. Philosophy of use. Everyone, when they open this and they get on camera, they, like, hold it like they're gangster or something like that, you know, and they start going, like, yeah, I could definitely stab a nigger with this knife. It definitely is tactical, spelled T-A-T-I-K-E-W-L, tactical, yeah, west side, or some shit like that, you know. It just seems really mature. Um, the way that you're going about talking about, so flippantly about stabbing people, but yeah, it's coming from me, though, and I really talk flippantly about stabbing people, but the problem is that it's a very, very large knife, and in my area, it is very, very fucking legal to carry this. I mean, they call this a pocket sword in the, in the, um, you know, in the knife world, I guess. Um... Really massive blade. It is damn near a virtual fixed blade due to, and you may not be able to see that because my shitty camera. Surprise, surprise. Back there, in the, between the rocker lock and where the tang of the blade starts, rather than just having nothing in metal meet metal, they have a little pin that is made of, like, reinforced fucking awesome steel, and it is called an axis lock, and it allows this to be able to withstand, I believe, in the magazines or the videos, they say about 300 pounds of pressure held on the blade, weight swinging you know, there is basically, when you lock this into position, there is no movement. A little bit side to side, actually. I kinda, that's kind of disappointing, but there's sort of no way for them to stop that, really. You know, I mean, unless you want a fixed blade, but you can't carry that in most areas. So I can carry this. What would I do if the police ever found this on me? I don't know, because you can't really talk your way out of being a legal, law-abiding citizen. I mean, like, just go look up videos of um, people using open-carry firearms 
when in states when they don't have to. The police are so afraid that you might be able to defend yourself. I'm not saying it's a Nazi state or anything, but it's totally a Nazi state. So it is legal. The likelihood of get caught, you know, doing anything is probably little. I mean, there are a lot of cops in our area, but the last time I jumped a turnstile, no, I'm kidding, like I never do that, but it's like, you know, don't jump a turnstile with a 45 hanging out of your pants and a, you know, doobie hanging out of your mouth, and it's likely you won't attract attention. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I do carry this, and my reason for carrying it isn't even really to be tactical. First of all, it's not fucking tactical. That was one thing I laughed at the Amazon reviewers, is that one wise old guy said, uh, he bought this exact same knife, and he said, how the fuck is it tactical? Quote, I could, what did he say, signal airplanes down with the shine that comes off of the blade and the plates in the handle. And I'm like, yeah, and he used a really cool word. He said, it's knife bling. He says, I use my knife for three things. He said, opening packages, cutting threads off of my wife's sweaters, and something like opening mail, or something like that. There are so many, you know, legal uses for this. And some people would say, well, then why does it have to be so big? And I'm like, because why the fuck not? It's like people who buy F-250s and then, you know, jack them up off the ground. I mean, like, yeah, it'll come super in handy when it snows. And you're like, well, are you just waiting for it to blizzard or something? I'm like, no, if they can afford the... If somebody can afford to burn the oil and fuck up the atmosphere for that, then hey, whatever, it looks cool. If you like a big old marker pickup truck, that's your fucking deal. If the gun that you want for target practice is a 50 caliber Desert Eagle, then that's what you fucking do. I mean, if you're going to carry a knife, you're going to carry a knife. You can just as easily kill somebody with a sharpened nickel. That's what they use in prison, though. Sharpen a nickel and get you right in the jugular. You can use any fucking thing as a weapon. And if I was going to use a weapon, why the fuck would I resort to a folding knife? I mean, seriously, of everything that I have on access, I you know, work within a 10-minute drive of my home. If I thought the damn zombie apocalypse was coming down, why wouldn't I go grab you know any of the old katanas or, um, you know... Good old Remington. Yes, actual farm. Um, this is probably not very responsible of me. This is not my farm. It's my dad's. Um, I had it in um, in my closet when they ran out of room in their closet for shoes, for shoes and shit. And uh, this is just an old pump action Remington that my dad had. It's completely unloaded. I know that it is. Um. Prison old prison shotgun that my dad picked up at a gun show. Why he thought we needed a shotgun, I don't fucking know. Then again, why I think I need a rifle. My Ruger 14's under the bed, but I really don't feel like fetching that out for visual effect. But my point being, like, this is a weapon. This has no legal use other than to terminate. This is completely for self-defense. I can't open a box with... Okay, hunting, yeah. Um, but I don't hunt. Um, you can't open a box with it. You can't open your mail with it. You can't cut threads with it. You can't open it packaging... With it, you can't, you know, how much, you know, you get what I'm saying. So, yeah, however, this can be used for, you know, legal purposes. I, and really, if I was going to use a knife to fight with, and I'm talking about, I have dealt with, you know, many, many styles of knives. Now, you know, and, and, and if, oh shit, it's not back there, it's on my pillow, that's right. Um, if I had to fight using a knife, not that I would, and I, I really want to go into the philosophy of knife fighting really quick, because unlike, unlike a lot of internet tough guys, I have legitimately spent a lot of my time, and people in real life think that they're badasses, I've spent a lot of my time studying the art of war and the art of combat, but only within certain arenas. Like, if somebody said, how would you arrange a, you know, armored division uh, invasion of a small town from, like, all sides, like a blitzkrieg, I'd go, uh, salty, salty. But more or less, I'm just studying, like, you know, the, the statistics behind, you know, who survives... Uh, you know, shootouts with, you know, between gang members looking at ballistics tests and shit like that. And it's just, I, all, all I do is piggyback off the knowledge that smarter people than me, you know, I just pair it back to them. I just, I just, oh, that sounds right. But, um, what I've really learned, a lot of people would say that they have a sensei, for example, and I hate the fucking, you know, uh, people who think that there's some sort of karate master because they go to some, you know, karate school or some shit like that. And I don't even get into that, but point is, is they will say, oh, I have a sensei, right? Well, I have a sensei too. And I really wish you'd visit his website. It's called nononsenseselfdefense.com. Um, the guy who runs it uh, has, I think, a pretty long list of credentials, of real-world credentials. He didn't win any martial arts tournament. He isn't an MMA fighter, bro! 
He was uh, an ex-gang member who used to live in Los Angeles and now works, you know, with the police trying to catch people and uh, get them fucked in court by saying, well, you know, this wasn't really self-defense, X, Y, Z. I don't believe in every single thing a man says, but he does a long, lengthy talk about knife fighting, and I, he's absolutely right. He says there is no such thing as a knife fight. There's no such thing where someone will walk up to you, just like in a Japanese anime, and say, like, you know, my name is Nico Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Bin, dun, 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 and give you a chance to pull out your knife. It's obviously going to be an assassination attempt. If you're going to use a blade as a weapon, you're not going to let the person know you're coming, and you won't pull it out until you know they don't have a chance to attack you back or defend themselves, clearly. And again, if you were to go, I'm an Eagle Montoya, you killed my Ben Avili, they're going to say, all right, and run and call the police or get to a place where you can't get to them or find a gun and shoot you or, you know, whatever. Um, but anyway. Not that I haven't pissed off all the internet tough guys saying, well, you don't know that you can use a knife to, like, hook a guy in the eyeball and then use a reverse karate chop to... No. If I was going to fight with a knife, if I absolutely had to, K-Bar. Fixed blade, pretty fucking strong carbon steel. Uh, mine isn't very sharp. I fucked up the edge, but it's kind of not the point. Again, not going to be many slashing maneuvers. I'm not going to be using fancy slashes. It's not a fucking katana. I'm going to stab you with it. I'm gonna grab a hold of your clothes and stab you as many times as I can before you try to twist my fucking head off. Again, that's how I would fight with a knife. Again, fixed one though. Not legal to carry in most areas. So, and that's next to my bed, that's under my pillow. Talk about paranoia, right? It just makes me feel better. It's like a night light. I also sometimes have slept with a Bible under my pillow, even though I'm not really religious anymore. Most of the times when I'm drunk and having watched like many horror movies that, that frighten me. When you watch like Last House on the Left with like a pint of rum inside you, you're like, Man, this shit's fucked up. Where's my gun? No, no, guns aren't safe. Where's my knife? Knives are safe. Anyway, um, but I've dealt with a bunch of different knives that come out in a bunch of different ways. Talking about, um, you know, damn these pockets. Damn these pockets, Padre. Oh, okay, it's getting caught. Assisted openers, small little hee-ho right there, or hi-ho if you want to say that. I have its bigger brother hanging around here somewhere. I actually lose track of my knives. I have cases filled with knives. And I start fucking losing track of them after a while. Um, I have a small collection of some stuff over here that I really don't feel comfortable talking about on camera, except for one of them, of the style, which mimics it, but is legal everywhere because it is not, well, sharp. I know a little bit about the art of flipping Filipino ballast songs. Now, this one is a shitty one. It's like a shitty $10 trainer I got in the mall, and it um, is starting to wear out. So the joints are wobbling to the point where some of the tricks are becoming impossible to do. But, uh, yeah, butterfly knife would not use for self-defense. People talk about, oh, how great the lock is, you know, I mean, the lock-up, because once you've got it in that position, there's no way that the lock can fail while you're obviously carving somebody up. But again, the time that it takes just to get that basic, unless you're so good, damn, that you can do just a single flip over just like that, the time that it takes to get that out, bam, I've already got you. All right, you know what? I'm hating on the Internet Tough Guys, and here I am pretending to be one. Where's I going with this? Right. Everyone on the Internet, stop, stop going around going like, you know, oh, definitely this knife is tactical. You can use that for slashes and grabbing and super backwards karate chops. It's a really big, fun knife, okay? It's for knife bling. Yes, I recognize that it could be used to hurt somebody, if my life was absolutely in danger and there was no other way and no option left and no uh, where to retreat, yeah, I would use a knife. If I had a gun, I'd use a fucking gun. If I had my car and someone was trying to carjack me, I'd just floor it and back over him or something. I mean, I'm just saying, you really got to stop because the more that you talk about how awesome it is to stab people with a knife, the more the government's going to want to fucking take him away. So be cool and just enjoy your big fucking knife. So anyway, I've gone over most of the points that I want to go over to and made a total ass of myself on the internet. Um, but there was something else I wanted to talk about. Something else with this? Oh, right. Here I go on my fucking weird rants. The way you open it. Because this knife is so fucking big, there is a couple problems with it. One, people say it's impossible to carry. Well, that's not true. It fits in my pocket fairly well. And this is actually a shallow pocket. Um, and I can't put my hand in there. The problem is, now that this, you know, it, now that it's in there... I can't put pocket change in there. I'm keeping my keys to my car and my vest pocket, and that's assuming that you wear a vest, and, you know, you probably fucking don't. The way that it's supposed to open is known as a waiver pull, or a wave pull, or whatever. Basically, and this is the, um, the cold steel, um, 
uh, Tylite, the 4-inch model with aluminum scales. Um, I've actually personally almost killed myself using this, and I have had a personal friend hurt himself trying to... Wow, I really need to clean the rust off that blade. Yeah. Almost, you know, hurt himself. Uh, it still has the scar, too, from trying to do a waiver pull. Now, a waiver pull is basically when you take this... You know, and let me just actually bring you down, bring you around town here. Let me just, uh... All right. Waiver pull... Ah, for fuck's sake. Professional, right? Waiver pull is when you either you know, catch this on the corner of your pants or strike it and then move it backwards to... And I've done this before on camera, but I'll show you now. Basically just catching it like that. Now, you couldn't really see that because I'm not far enough away. Sorry, the setup in my room isn't really... And with this one, it works really well. Now, this one works in a similar way using this thumb plate. You cannot open this single-handedly, I find, not with one swift movement. Unlike, and again, why I would rather use this. This is the thing that is most comfortable with, most lightweight, easy to deploy, great for, you know, maneuvering and whatever, and getting up in there, obviously. Really easy. This is actually even faster than some assisted openers that I have. What's the best assisted opener that I Oh, it's in a case somewhere. Well, anyway. Um, so, you can kind of... I've seen some people who have huge fucking hands do this. Not my cup of tea. You can kind of get it started, and then once it's reached that point where the... I don't know what the mechanism is called. The thing that went, takes it and closes it automatically for you. If you move it here, it basically wants to shut by itself. Which, by the way, they say, watch the fuck out for that. When you are closing it, they say close it with two hands. Do not attempt to, like, you know, push the rocker lock down and kind of lock it on your shirt or whatever. Don't do that. I've heard multiple testimonies of people saying that they have now stitches all across here because the blade came down and chompity chomp chomped. And by the way, that happened to me with my trainer, Balasong, okay? I was going for, I don't even know what it's called, but it's that trick where you throw out, back, over, and I was listening to music and I had done a Y2K rollover. So obviously the blade was facing up, and I grabbed it by the wrong end, and I started doing that, and I went, you know, back. I forget how what position I was in. I forget. Sexual position. But basically I had it just like that. Grabbing the latch handle, grabbing the bite handle, really, and I was listening to some music. I'm like, this is a good song! Sheik! Ah! Tap the fucking bone. For like months after that, while I was tying my shoes, I could still feel like the pain, even though the wound had closed up. So anyway, you can try to push it to that point and then get enough momentum to get it open, but I find that I cannot do it in one fell swoop without running the risk of accidentally having this thing, um, you know, collapse back on my hands. So the way that they want you to do it is a waiver pull, which, again, as I showed you with this one, may not be the best idea for the fucking design. The reason being is that this has a very fucking curved blade, as if you didn't notice. See how that blade curves back up? And, oh, trust me, that's a fucking beautiful knife. I really love the design of that. It's like a Bowie knife, but with a little more, you know, you know, almost like a mm, little uh, curve. It's a very sexy little lady. Well, she ain't little, little actually. She's a sexy big girl. She's a BBW. Oh yeah, that's right. Tolster just quoted some weird sexual shit. Man, that's awesome. Anyway, so um, that is awesome. The balance on that is fucking cool. I never even tried that before. Which, by the way, that little choil there. The chances that this is gonna slip up on you. You know what I mean? I'm pulling down on this. The chances that your hand will clear that choil and go up and grab the blade? Not likely. You also have that little block there. It's keeping you from just touching blade. So, um, not a big deal. However, um, because it is curved, the way that you open it makes me fucking nervous as hell. Because I'm very much afraid, and I've only ever been practicing and doing it very slowly. As you catch it here, as you're bringing it up out of your pocket, you catch the thumb plate here. And you begin to move it out. And so this can actually come out in a flash, even though it's that fucking big. However, Watch the, watch the tip, watch the tip. Okay, so that's how you, how you deploy that. However, I've known some people, watch, all I have to do is rotate my hand like a little bit, and bam, I can actually feel the blade tip touching my leg. So all you gotta do is do that kind of fast, not thinking, twist a little bit, and bam, you just stabbed yourself in the legs. It happened to one of the YouTubers I'm subscribed to, Jordan the OK. Um, just type in like a spot I... Stab myself or something like that, or spot an accident, Jordan, something, you'll get it. Um, so I've been practicing very, very slowly. I don't think I could ever really pull this with confidence. I still carry it, but again, I'm not assuming I'm going to have to stab anybody. I'm not walking into the, you know, streets of Eastside Baltimore. I'm always afraid I'm going to stab myself with this shit. Um, I would rather, honestly, be able to just grab it, get it out, and then very quickly...
just do it with one hand like that. Once it's out, it's out. And you can do whatever task you want to do. Anyway. So I've ranted for a long time now. But, um, and, and, and in accordance with what I had said before, for example, and I've shown this off before, this is my bottle cap opener. Okay? It never leaves my house. I never carry this with me. Possibly in the gravest extreme, if for whatever reason my ass had to, you know, go on the lam, and it was just something that if I saw some flashing lights, I could just throw it in my pocket, which isn't a good idea. I don't think there's any good way of handling police, actually. I don't think there's any way you can really get away with it. As time goes on, their police are becoming more and more clever in the way that they handle things. And I think it's more and more likely that if you're breaking the law, you're going to go to jail. Or even if you're not breaking the law, you're going to go to jail. Or they'll just shoot you in the head for doing nothing. Or being black. Or white. Or Cherokee. Or gay. Or whatever. Anyway, I'm not anti-police, though. I actually have personal friends who are police, but I can just never tell them, you know what I mean? Like, how do you sleep at night knowing that you basically are just corporate thugs? I, I bet you there are some good police officers out there, but I don't think the ratio is high enough. Anyway, wow, is Tolstoy pissing off more majorities? Wow, I'm just like Malcolm X, like nobody loves this nigga. So, um, this is my bottle cap opener. It's what I use to just open some bottles. And if you see this at a, you know, gun show, because, you know, people drink at home, not at the gun show, but they know it's in within the same category. Like, you'll see jewelry shows next to gun knife shows. Or if you're at a garage sale and you see something like this, you just calmly walk up and you, you say, hey, this is really good paperweight. I like this paperweight. I could weigh down some papers. Do not pick it up and go like, nah, 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 because then you look like a fucking retard. You're scaring everybody and you don't look responsible and it's dumb. It's like pointing a gun at yourself or pointing a gun at others. I was at a Bass Pro Shop this afternoon and some stupid kid was like waving around a paintball gun and pointing at people's faces. I know it's unloaded, but damn. And then again, I know this is coming from the same little angsty kid who said that, you know, airsoft guns shouldn't be treated like real firearms. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying it's really, really immature that all these other fucking reviewers are talking about how all you can use the cold steel spot for is stabbing people and you would have no other reason to carry it but self-defense. It'd be the perfect thing if I had to stab a nigger. Like, come on. Come off it. Just, you know, hey, people could say the same damn thing about this. This thing only has really one function, which is to stab. But I have used it to cut things open. I've used it as an EDC. I've used this as an EDC. This is probably the best EDC knife I have. And this could very easily be used as a weapon. But again, to quote the same guy who was talking about, you know, I use my knife for three things, opening mail, opening parcels, cutting threads of my wife's shirts, um, he said something about, um, oh, by the way, maybe you didn't know this, but, and, um, uh, the animal, Mark the Animal McYoung, who runs NoNonsenseSelfDefense.com, no he, he used this, he said the exact same quote, which is a ball-peen hammer, has more stopping power and is a better weapon than a knife. But, you know, the funny point is, is you don't carry that around in public or else the police want to know about it. These can be used for legal reasons, and that's the only reason why we get to carry them. And I feel bad for people who live in London who don't get to carry them because they're a fun toy. It's just a toy. It's almost like, um, I'm really impressed with this new guy I'm watching on YouTube called Weapon Collector. And uh, Weapon Collector, he's, like, he's an English guy, and um, the stuff that he collects is all like, legal for his state. And he shows off this one video, and he's not being like a, you know, an angsty little kid going, Look at me, I'm so cool because I have a gun, I'm so a gangster, and shit like that. He says like he's got a deactivated 9mm Israeli Uzi, and it's deactivated completely. He has a little certificate he shows off at the beginning and the end of the video to prove that it's not. And he's just going over it, and he's not talking about like you know killing people or being, you know against the man and shit like that. He's just saying, like, this is my deactivated gun. I like the collection of it, you know, and everything. And I started looking at deactivated guns. Actually, though, one of my other fans showed me something about Semex or Denex or something like that. It's a company that makes replication firearms that can't be fired. No moving parts. You could even probably bring it to an Oticon, except for they'd stop you at the front gate and say, oh my god, a weapon, call 911, terrorist. But um, they still haven't made a deactivated or replica Kimber. That Kimber Raptor Pro 22? No, Pro, what do they call that? Pro tw the Kimber Raptor Pro 2. The one with the 3-inch barrel and the stainless steel plating. It's so sexy looking. But yeah, I carried a whole bunch of knives for, for EDC um, purposes. One last thing, I guess, before we're gone. Here's the box it comes in. Ugly as fuck color. Pimp purple plum suit color. The fuck. And I like this little thing bow wrap that it comes with. It comes with a little, little message. A little message inside. It comes, the knife comes with its own condom. Oh, well, you know, I can't seem to get it to come out. Maybe I could sit here clawing at it or chewing at it, or I could just use a knife. Oh, man. 
Isn't the world great when you can use a tool? I once used this at um, work to scrape off. I carried it to work like a little EDC because it was very small. And uh, this girl wanted to get rid of these sequins on the back of her cell phone that she had gotten stupidly like on, on a whim. And I used this and I sat down and we talked on, you know, on a time like the 15 minutes where people weren't dropping off prescriptions for hardcore narcotics. And I was talking to her and scraping it off like I was, you know, shelling clams or something like that. And um, that was a fun time. Oh, I didn't become a maniac and just ah, stab everybody. You know, that doesn't happen as often as you all want to believe it does, so. Comes with a little note. Little note says, this knife is extremely sh- Well, you made it round, so how can I read it, jackasses? Holster just angry today, apparently. Actually, today's been a good day, so I'm not angry. Warning, this knife is extremely sharp. We have tried to make this knife as strong, tough, and safe as possible. Please keep in mind that despite its size and weight, it is a folding knife, not a fixed blade and was designed for cutting and very light chopping duties. Do not use it as an axe, a hatchet, a cleaver, a machete, a screwdriver. I can't use it as a screwdriver! Oh, come on! Um, pry bar or sword? Don't use it as a sword? Please only use it for tasks appropriate for a folding knife, and we're short. It will give you many years of long, faithful service. Actually, pretty cool. Pretty cool message from Lynn Thompson. Check into the medium. Medium. The small. I like the small. The, the tiny one with the thumb stud. Looks like it's easier to deploy. Has the same really, really pretty knife bling, but it's smaller. Fits in your hand better, it might be. Um, it's about like $112, $110, $120, I forget. $100, yeah, it's about right. I don't know if I would shell out that for another one of these, because this one works all right for me. Again, I don't stab too many people on a daily basis. Although, in my own... Ooh, see, I can't even... Mm, you little bastard. In my own, um... For my own pride, or to believe that I'm some sort of a badass, I do think that I would be able to... I'm not even going to say that after everything I just said. Well, thumbs down this review.